I've been watching a lot of Mr. Davis's videos recently. Uh, he has a wonderful channel, I highly recommend it. Long-term listeners here will recognize the name. He's collaborated with me a few times, he's appeared in a few of my videos. Anyway, recently he did a retrospective of his favorite Twilight Zone episodes, and one in particular stood out. And I think as soon as you start listening to this story, you'll know exactly the one I mean. Well, without wanting to give too much away, I think it's time for you all to sit back and relax with your favorite drink and listen. Oh, the events that have transpired over the past four weeks have just been horrifying. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't to blame. I just need to say I'm so, so sorry. I'm writing this down now, not to try and make sense of it all, but as a way to explain what happened to her. One last sorry to encapsulate her joy and positivity before the media slices her to ribbons and everyone forgets who she was. Well, I should start from the beginning. My name is Elizabeth, and I work at a gas station slash deli slash convenience store. For those of you local to New Jersey or New York, you know it as Quick Check. I've been working here for two years now, and I've become quite the expert in disappearing before any major rush in the kitchen. Hell, I'm even a manager. So I eyed a group of teenagers walking in the front doors, eyes dead set on the deli. Time to act quickly, I thought. Hey, Jesse, I'm going to go hit the outside garbage. Cover the board, will you? Okay, she chirped, shooting me her usual toothy grin. God, that poor girl had zero idea she was about to get slammed with at least seven sandwiches. I headed outside, quickly pushed down the garbage so they all looked to be less than half full, then proceeded to walk around the side of the building to smoke a cigarette. Now, I know smoking is the usual way to get out of work, and I could have just said I was going to have a cigarette. But, well, QC pays for our breaks, and we're expected to come back from our breaks if there's a rush. So, it's better to say you're doing work. <laughs> yep, again, I'm a professional slacker. So, I'm smoking my cigarette, I'm trying to blow smoke rings, even though I know that shit doesn't work outside. As I'm tilting my head back, I see a flash of purple out of the corner of my eye. Curious, I look over in the direction I saw it. Sitting in the bushes is a doll. I walk over, curiously, to check it out more. It was a porcelain doll. It had curly black hair, two blue eyes and a purple dress. It was in near perfect condition, except for one thing. Where one of its legs should have been was just an empty hole and a wire. Oh, it genuinely looked creepy. I loved it. I love creepy shit. And finding a broken doll hiding in the bushes with no one else around? What's creepier than that? I had to show Jessie. I go inside, actually help her with a board to free her up. Nine sandwiches and three snacks. Yeah. And then I dragged her ass outside. Look at that thing! Jesse grimaced. Ugh, that thing's ghastly. What's it doing there in the bushes? <laughs> like hell if I know. I started laughing. Hey, we should name it. She rolled her eyes. No, we should leave it alone. I've seen Annabelle. I don't want anything to do with that thing. Let's go back inside. It's Saturday, and there's a brand new cleaning list we have to get through. Ugh, you're such a baby. I walked over and picked it up. Look at her. She's missing a leg. Oh, we can't leave some crippled orphan outside all alone. That's like a guaranteed ticket to hell. Don't touch it. You're going to get cursed. Nah, I think she's cute. 
She's too precious to curse me. Besides, I already sold my soul for a bag of Cheetos. What can she really do to me? Jessie rolled her eyes again and went back inside. I couldn't believe how much this doll freaked her out. <laughs> my face broke out into a sinister grin. This was going to be hysterical. I brought my new little friend inside and put it in Jessie's locker and went back to work as normal. Honestly, between all the cleaning, annoying customers, and making an absurd amount of food for people who are too drunk to really appreciate it, I'd totally forgotten about the doll. That was until 10pm, when I heard Jesse scream. I was mopping the deli. I quickly put the mop down and ran to her in the back room. There she was, staring at her locker and covering her mouth. Ugh! You're such a bitch, Liz, she exclaimed. I was dying of laughter. Why the hell did you put this with my stuff? Now she's gonna, like, bond with me or some shit. God, you're pathetic, Jessie. It's just a freaking doll. She picked it up and threw it at me. I didn't catch it. It fell to the ground, and its hand cracked a little bit. <gasps> what did you do to my baby? I jokingly yelled. Cut the shit, Liz. I'm done with this. I'll see you tomorrow. She stormed out of the room, pushing past me as she went. She turned into the deli and slipped on the freshly mopped floor. She let out a cry of pain as she landed on her hand. She called in the next day. She sprained her wrist in two places. I, of course, got ridden up for not mopping the floors properly, leaving them too wet and not putting down a wet floor sign. After being given some BS about how lucky we are, she's still not suing. I went back to work. Great, I thought to myself. Now I have to do all this by myself. I looked at the doll I had sitting on the shelf next to the banana peppers. <laughs> well, not completely alone. I have you, Jessie. Oh. Jessie was going to flip when she found out I still had the doll and I'd named it after her. It was two weeks before Jessie came back to work. The entire staff had signed a card for her and bought her cheap donuts to welcome her back. I ran to her and gave her the biggest hug I could muster. Oh, Liz, stop. You're squishing me. God, I missed you so much. The new girl Jessie isn't nearly as fun as you. We have a new girl named Jessie? Uh, Josh exclaimed from the group. It's that stupid doll Liz has been lugging around with her for the past two weeks. This thing is ugly as fuck, y'all. Oh, shush you. I winked at him. You know you love her. You still have that freaking doll? Jessie pushed back from my hug. Look what that thing did to me, you sick fuck. She held up her splinted wrist. Well, if you say Jessie did that to you, she should have been ridden up then. I stuck my tongue out at her. God, this isn't a fucking joke. I cracked that thing's wrist and it cracked mine. And you named that fucking piece of shit after me? God, what the actual fuck is wrong with you? Well... Not completely. I put an I before the E at the end because well, I'm pretty sure that's how you actually spell Jessie. I kept laughing and she stepped on my foot. God, you fucking... <laughs> Girls, stop. Our manager, Tina, stepped in. I get that you're upset, Jessie, but you can't be yelling obscenities at your co-workers. This is supposed to be a happy occasion. Just settle down and let's have some donuts, yeah? We got pumpkin poppins. They're your favorite, right, Jessie? Tina always had a talent for diffusing situations. Jessie turned away from me and muttered an apology. We spent the next 20 minutes chit-chatting and breaking off to assist customers. Jessie didn't say a word to me for the rest of the day. I put the other Jessie away in my own locker. I figured the joke was getting old for now, anyway. I had the next couple of days off from work, and wound up leaving Jessie in my locker. When I got back to work, 
Tina immediately brought me into her office. This joke with the doll ends now, Liz, she said almost as soon as the door closed. What do you mean? I asked, genuinely puzzled. Don't act dumb. Jessie told me she's been finding that doll everywhere in this store. In the freezer, in her locker, even in the bathroom. Yeah, I know you probably got other people in on the joke to scare her, but this is a work environment, Liz. And as a middle manager, you have a responsibility to your direct reports. You can't turn them against one another and make Jesse not want to be here. Oh, Tina, I promise I didn't get anyone involved in this. Well then, they took it upon themselves. I don't know and I don't care. You need to fix this. All right. Sorry, Tina. She turned away. Honestly... I'm worried about Jessie. Please talk to her and let her know that this is all over. I left the office without saying another word. I went to my locker first and got the doll, Jessie. Her head was turned backwards. Cute guys, yeah, real original. I brought doll Jessie outside to the dumpster and chucked her in. Next step was to go find person Jessie and apologize. She was on break, so I found her in the training room. What I saw shocked me. She was pale. She had bags under her eyes. Her hair was unkempt and frizzy, like she kept it in the same bun for days without brushing it. This was not normal. She was always so well put together. Normally, she somehow made a grey t-shirt and green apron look nice. Well, if not attractive. She wasn't even smiling, though, as she mindlessly scrolled down her Facebook feed on her phone. I stammered as I tried to find the words. Oh, hey, Jesse. Oh, fuck, Liz. She stood up, hand clutched to her chest. Oh, you scared me. What the hell do you want? I'm on my break. Again... This just wasn't like her. Where was the ray of sunshine I've come to know over the years? I cleared my throat and started explaining. I heard the team's been harassing you with the doll. Look, I just wanted to let you know I threw it in the dumpster. No one's been fucking with me, Liz. That doll is haunting me. Do you think I didn't try throwing it out? Jesse, it's just a doll. And it's probably just Josh messing with you. Fishing it out of the dumpster and sticking it in the bathroom. It's Josh. He's stupid. She seemed to relax a little with this. Why don't you go home early today and relax? Take a shower. Good God, girl. You stink. She chuckled. There we go. A sign of her old self. I patted her on the shoulder we walked out of the room. I was feeling pretty good about the whole situation until we passed the register. Right there, on top of the counter, was doll Jessie. Jessie screamed and broke down into tears on the spot. She sat down on the floor and started rocking back and forth, hyperventilating. Customers were staring at her. I didn't know what to do. I threw the doll in the garbage next to the register and escorted Jessie, with some effort, to the office. I sat there with her and she just cried. She cried and cried for about 20 minutes. I tried calling her emergency contact, her boyfriend Jason, but when he answered the phone and I explained the situation, he simply told me they weren't together anymore and hung up the phone. I sat there just petting Jessie's head and telling her, it's okay, it's just a doll, over and over again. When she finally calmed down, we had the first real conversation we'd had in weeks. I started. Jessie, what happened with Jason? As if the girl hadn't run out of tears, her eyes immediately welled up. We broke up. Her lip quivered. 
when I was out on medical leave. We had no income coming in for two weeks. We fell behind on our bills. We missed the rent payment. The landlord came over and demanded we pay. We apologized and explained to her the situation. The heartless bitch just slapped us with a late fee and told us to pay in the next two weeks. Then Jason and I started arguing. We argued about our finances. We argued about how we both have entry-level positions at low-paying jobs. We argued about the fact he finished school and has no real job. And we argued about the fact it's taken me six years to finish school and I still have another semester. No degree at all to show for it. Her head sunk a bit after this statement. That wasn't the end of us, though. It was the nightmares. Ever since that night where I hurt my wrists, I've been having these terrible nightmares. Mostly about a boy. It's the 4th of July. He has a porcelain doll. He tapes it to a firework and sends the doll into the air. It gets caught in a tree, breaking the doll's leg in the process. The tree catches fire. The boy watches in amazement at the fire he'd created. That's when there's this sickening crack and a branch falls. The branch pins the boy to the ground, crushing his legs in the process. The fire then slowly consumes the boy. I'm forced to watch until his body is turned to ash. She starts crying again. I would wake up screaming, waking up Jason in the process. At first he was sympathetic, but night after night, well, he grew annoyed. He would say, I have to work in the morning. You went and got yourself hurt, so I have to make ends meet. And then one day, I woke up and he was gone. I tried calling him, but my number was blocked. I guess, well, I guess he just had enough. I was speechless. I just sat there with my mouth agape. How could he do that to her? So now, I don't have enough to pay rent. I don't have anywhere to live. And I can't stay on campus. Housing has a massive waiting list. I'm going to have to drop out of school. I hugged her. No, you're not. You're going to come stay with me. I called another manager to come cover my shift. Then I drove her to her place to grab her things. We went to my place. Some shitty studio in the middle of the projects. But, well, it would do. I let my husband know what was going on. And he unrolled our futon for her. I knew it was going to be awkward. Three adults sleeping in one tiny bedroom. But I had no idea what would happen that night. I woke up around 3 a.m. to muffled cries. I looked over to my dog's bed, thinking she was barking in her sleep. But she wasn't asleep. She was wide awake and staring at the entrance to the kitchen. Half asleep, I rolled out of bed and went to see what was happening. I instantly woke up and was fully alert when I saw Jessie. She had a hammer and was breaking her own fingers. I screamed. What the fuck are you doing? Her head shot up, and she dropped the hammer. Jessie is broken. That's all she said before she collapsed. I called 911, and they brought her to the ER. From the ER, they brought her to the adult psychiatric facility for a 72-hour hold. Apparently, this is standard in cases of self-harm. I visited her twice a day, every day. She just kept muttering. Jessie is broken. Jessie is broken. Jessie is broken. Over and over. She was completely catatonic. Now, you would think someone in her condition, with nowhere to go, would be welcomed with open arms in the hospital until she's better, right? Well, the answer to that is no. I got the call from work that her insurance wouldn't pay for her to be there, and she was being released. Both me and my husband were at work, so no one could go pick her up. I asked them to let her stay there until I could pick her up at 11pm. But apparently, even this was too much. Because 
she was released. She got on a bus. She came to our job. The next part is hard for me to talk about. Jesse, I'm just so sorry. She came through the door. She was wearing the pyjamas she'd been wearing when she was admitted. Her hair was a tangled mess. Her eyes darted around, frantically looking everywhere and nowhere. She continued to mutter, Jesse is broken. Jesse is broken. Jesse is broken. She walked to the back, despite odd looks from the customers, and grabbed a knife. People started screaming. I ran to her. Jesse, what are you doing here? What are you doing with that knife? She didn't acknowledge me. I tried to grab it from her, but she swung it at me, cutting my arm. Other people were now trying to restrain her, but she managed to back herself into the back corner, screaming. Jesse is broken. Jesse is broken. Jesse is broken. In the corner of that room is a bread slicer. She turned it on, and the blade whirred to life. I screamed, Jesse, don't. She put her arm into the machine. Blood splattered everywhere, and she died in seconds. Her funeral was today. Nobody really attended. This girl really had no one. And the people who did care were so utterly disturbed that they wanted to distance themselves as far away from everything that had happened as possible. I don't blame them. The whispers at work were too much to bear. I quit my job. I don't think I want to work with people anymore. Maybe I'm just depressed. I don't know. But I think I'm going to just try to work from home. I can't bear to see another person so full of happiness and life just unravel like that. I'll never truly know what happened to my friend, but I don't think I want to know. Whether or not that doll had any supernatural powers, or whether life had just truly destroyed a person so beautiful, well, it was my fault. I don't know if this is significant or not. But as I was leaving QC for the last time, I couldn't help but notice a shard of porcelain glass by the dumpster. Hmm, what did you think of that one? I thought that was really interesting. Was it entirely in her imagination? Was someone fooling around with a doll and taking it out of the garbage and leaving it places? It really could have gone either way. It could have been supernatural or just people messing around. Anyway, a very sad ending to that story. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And as always, I will try, try, try to reply to as many as I can. Well, hope that was a bit easier than uh, Monday's marathon four-hour video. And of course, I'll be back again on Friday. And I know you'll join me, won't you? Of course you will. Until then, sweet dreams and bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter, listen to the background music, and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt, and, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay? <laughs>